think we are live. It is go time. <laughs> Welcome everybody. I am so excited to bring you this video today. If you are wondering what the heck we're doing, um, today is all about fast, healthy meal prep that you can do, set yourself up for the week for success in under 30 minutes. It is possible. If you don't believe me, just stick around. I'm going to make you a liar. All right, so we are going to start with our rice. Oh, and by the way, if none of you even know who I am, let me just introduce myself real quick. My name's Jen. I am a holistic nutritionist. I'm a crazy busy mom of three kids, um, but most importantly, my passion is to encourage and empower people much like yourself to adopt a more plant-based lifestyle. And this video is gonna be a great example of how you can do that and still taste food and eat food that tastes great um, and that you're probably used to eating anyway. So with that being said, the Q&A uh, I'd love to do with you guys. I wanna answer any questions that you may have, but because I'm gonna be elbow deep in meal prep, we're gonna save that till the end. Again, it's gonna be fast, so you're not gonna to have to wait too long, but uh, if you wanna just put your question up in the comments, just know that after we're done going live, um, I'm actually gonna go through and answer every question that you have. So go ahead and put it up in the comments. Um, share this with somebody who, who needs this in their life, right? Again, fast, easy, healthy meal prep in under 30 minutes. With that being said, we are going to start with my first time-saving tip. If you do not have yourself a rice cooker, you need to go on Amazon or head over to Target or Walmart and buy yourself one. They are inexpensive. When I say inexpensive, I think this thing was, it was definitely under $40. And this is like a, you know, the mother of all rice cookers because I do cook a lot at one time. Um, but you can get much smaller ones, honestly, for under 20 bucks. It's just simple, it's easy. You throw the rice in there, you throw your liquid, set it and forget it. Um, so I'm gonna illustrate how to do this now, but I want you to know for this meal prep, it is a good idea to have this ready to go before you start. So I suggest cooking it the night before or just starting it about 30 minutes out. And the reason being is because this meal prep is so fast, you guys, your rice isn't gonna be done when it comes time to actually put all those meals together. Um, so I'm gonna show you again, this is all in the 30 minutes that I'm talking about, which is why I'm gonna uh, do that for you right now. But just know I've already got my rice prepped, ready to go. I'm gonna get it out of the fridge in just a second so I can show you towards the end how we're gonna put them all together. So I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, my family, we use brown rice. That's just our personal preference. If you prefer quinoa or cauliflower rice, go for it. I am going to prep five cups of brown rice, and that is gonna yield me 10 cups of rice altogether. And we can, we'll talk more about um, quantities and that sort of stuff a little bit later when we go to actually put our bowls together. But I've got my five cups of brown rice in there. Something you want to do whenever you're making rice, I always suggest adding a flavor enhancer. Um, right now, I'm just gonna add some veggie stock. You guys, this is another time-saving tip. Buy the veggie stock at the store. They come in those cute little compact containers. You can also get the concentrated stuff. You can get the bouillon cubes. Look for low or no sodium. We don't want any added sodium um, if we can help it, and certainly, you want ingredients that you can actually pronounce, right? Because if you can't pronounce it, your body's not gonna want it either. Leave it out. So there we go. We've got our veggie stock and or, if you don't have veggie stock, just put water in there. That's cool, guys, but add a little bit more flavor to it. If you wanna add a little bit of vegan butter, if you wanna add some salt, pepper seasoning, what up, Denise? Um, go for it. It's just going to add a little bit more depth of flavor when it comes to the actual meal. Okay, so my oven is preset to 425 degrees right now. I've got myself a sheet pan. I've got my cheat sheet here, guys, in case I forget anything. Okay, so I've got my sheet pan. I've got one of these little handy-dandy silicone mats. Again, if you're interested in these, it's a super time saver. Really easy. I love them because nothing sticks to it. You don't have to worry about you know, aluminum foil or cooking spray or anything like that. Um, these things are fantastic. Fantastic. You can see mine is <laughs> well worn in. Um, so I've got that on the sheet pan. My next time saving tip. 
Buy your vegetables already cut. There are so many opportunities for this, guys. Um, so today I'm gonna to be roasting broccoli and cauliflower. Again, I've already bought my package, pre-cut into the florets. No knife necessary. All right, guys, if you've got some huge, huge florets in here, which I'll show you in just a second, all I'm gonna do is break it up with my hand. I'm just gonna pour the whole thing on there, why not? I love vegetables. Get it all in there. All right, so some of these giant ones, okay, you're just gonna break it up with your hands. Quick, easy, a little bit of a stress reliever maybe, I don't know. All right, I'm breaking them up, breaking them up. And then I'm simply just gonna add, you wanna lay them out in a single layer, okay? You don't want them all on top of each other because then they start to get soggy and they steam a little bit more, they won't get that sort of crisp, um, little char that I like on my roasted vegetables. There are some big ones in here. All right. So now that we've done that, I'm just gonna take some olive oil and I'm just gonna drizzle. Now, if you are trying to reduce the olive oil in your diet, use a little bit of that veggie stock for the moisture. Today, I'm gonna use olive oil and then I'm just gonna season them with just salt and pepper. Good old salt and pepper. Go crazy with whatever spices and seasoning that you guys know you like. For today, it's just salt and pepper. Simplicity. Sometimes we make it a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. Salt and pepper is divine on vegetables. Okay, I'm gonna pop this in my oven that is preheated, hi Jess, at 425 degrees. While I'm doing that, I want you guys to comment. Are you new to meal prep? Have you ever meal prep before? Um, if you do meal prep, how often do you do it? And what are the challenges that you guys face? So go ahead, throw a comment in there, hit a like, I will be right back. All right, so if you are just joining us, we are doing meal prep for your work week in under 30 minutes. Right now we are already have our rice started and or cooked. Our broccoli and cauliflower is roasting in the oven. We are gonna move on to our cocoa nut cluster parfait. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I am over the overnight oats. I love them, but at some point you just need to take a break. My poor husband is just like, I've had enough, we need to switch it up. So that's when I decided I needed to do something different. These cocoa nut clusters come together. There's no baking involved. Um, they are easy, they are filling, gives me that crunch. Like I just love all the different textures. So let me just show you how we're gonna put this together after I take a sip. Okay, so the nuts I'm using are walnuts and almonds. You can certainly chop them if you want. I'm just gonna get crazy. I like them whole, but throw in about three quarters, three quarter cup of walnuts. And then I'm gonna do the same with almonds. Throw about three quarter cup of almonds in there. Then I've got my raw sunflower seeds. Uh, something I should make a note of to you guys. Use unsalted nuts. This is more of a sweet kind of breakfast. Uh, you don't want salted nuts. It's just gonna throw the taste off. A little pinch of salt is great, but if they're all salted, it's just, it's gonna be whack. I just said whack. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, um, so for some added nutrition, uh, we are gonna add in a few tablespoons of chia seeds. You guys, if you have not used chia seeds, listen to me, get them into your daily regimen. It's so easy. There's so many ways you can use this. I'm gonna throw in about two to three tablespoons of chia seeds. These, this um, seed right here has amazing benefits. It has tons of fiber, uh, tons of all these vitamins and minerals, magnesium, phosphorus, uh, manganese, like it's just, mm -hmm. it's incredible what you can get in just one tablespoon of this stuff. So again, if it's not part of your daily routine, make it, make it one. Um, and then for our chocolate flavor, I'm just gonna add a tablespoon of good old fashioned unsweetened cocoa. Throw that in there. 
I'm gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of sweetener. I'm just happening to use honey right now. You could use pure maple syrup, you can use agave. Uh, if you're trying to watch your sugar, stevia is even, can be used here, you know, a, little, a few drops of the liquid stevia. Um, and then I'm gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of, hello, hello, so glad you guys are all on here. This makes it more fun. Um, about a tablespoon and a half of melted coconut oil. And if, again, if you're watching your oil, you're just trying to stay away from it, just omit it. I mean, it's just, it's going to help to kind of keep those nut clusters formed, uh, gives it a different mouth feel, but it's not 100% necessary. So we are mixing, we are mixing. We're just really, just you just wanna coat everything, okay? You wanna coat it all with the cocoa, um, with all the seeds, with the coconut oil. I'm seeing you guys, I got my phone right here just in case we had any technical difficulties, but it's kind of hard to read sideways. All right, so it's pretty well mixed. I don't know if you guys can see there. All right, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my mason jars. You don't have to use mason jars. Use whatever containers you got. And I'm gonna grab mine. Um, and before I add in the actual nut clusters here, I am going to add about, uh, about a third cup of frozen berries. Okay, so this is our next time-saving tip. I'm just going to show you guys. These aren't organic, all right? So don't hate. For all you people out there that are going to tell me it has to be organic, listen to me. I think this is one of the reasons that people are a little standoffish about all of this. If it is a matter of getting fruits and vegetables into your system or not, then don't worry about the price of organic. It is so much better just to have these in your body, feeding yourselves at a, at a, you know, a cellular level, getting that nutrition, than it is to worry about organic versus non-organic. Now, I know that organic has its benefits, and believe me, when I can get them, I do. I couldn't find organic blueberries. I'm sorry. So, there you go. All right, this is a perfect opportunity, a perfect time-saving tip because it's already washed. It's already in, you know, the, the little pieces that you need them in. You may not find blueberries, you know, year-round. Obviously, you don't because they're not always in season. So this gives you an opportunity to have, you know, delicious tasting fruit and berries have amazing antioxidants. Um, so use it. Use it, use it, use it. I'm going to set that off to the side. Um, another kind of myth or uh, what, misinformation, I think, that's out there right now is that a lot of people feel like anything that's canned or frozen or, um, you know, did, I don't know what else. Frank, that's what I'm using. Canned and frozen, those are the two examples I'm giving you guys. Jarred, all right, we're going to talk about that in just a second. They feel like the nutrition um, is somehow lacking. But there have been studies that show that actually frozen uh, fruits, especially berries in this situation, still have all the phytochemicals and all the antioxidants that fresh fruit do. So listen, again, come on, let's find out the facts. Go to nutritionfacts.org. Michael Greger, he's amazing. And he's my go-to if I have a question about anything. Um, and it's really, it's all about the facts, guys. The studies and the facts. No biased opinions. Okay, now that I got off that rant, I have evenly distributed my cocoa nut clusters into my jars here, and that's it. That is it. So you've got your fruit in the bottom, you've got your, um, your nut clusters or your, I mean, you could call it granola, whatever you want. You got that on top. When you stick them in the fridge, it's gonna harden a little bit and it's gonna adhere those nuts together, which again, kind of makes it that, that's why I call it nut clusters. Um, it's very similar to just a really chunky granola. It's got no grains, no oats, nothing. Um, anyway, it's really good. And if you're worried about the fats, again, healthy fats in moderation, guys, is excellent. Nuts are an excellent source of that. We're not using a ton because we divided it up amongst the five here. Um, when it comes time to serve these bad boys, you could do a couple things. Uh, I like to do it with unsweetened almond milk. You make it more like a cereal. Another great idea is putting, to make it the official parfait, 
uh, I love to put the yogurt on. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I don't love all the ingredients that are in this thing, but this is one that my whole family will give the thumbs up to. They enjoy the flavor. Um, this is the Silk Almond Milk Vanilla flavor. If you are trying to switch from dairy to non-dairy and you're looking for a yogurt, try this one. I know there's other great ones out there, but if I can get all five people to agree on this one, there's, there's something good going on there. So give that a whirl. All right, I'm gonna get these out of the way. Let's push these up here. And you're just gonna put your lid on them. Like I said, stick it in the fridge. And when you're ready um, to eat it, put your milk or your yogurt in there. Okay, so moving on, we are going to bag some smoothies. Smoothies are an excellent way to get nutrition into your daily regimen. Whether you're using it as a snack, whether you're using it as a breakfast replacement, whatever it is, you need some. And what's awesome about it is that you can stick a handful, like a, a nice packed handful of greens in there and not even taste it. Guys, I do this to my kids all the time. I mean, what kid likes to sit down with a big bowl of salad in front of them? Mine don't. Every once in a while, they surprise me, but overall, no. And if I'm being completely honest, I get a little tired of the salad game myself. So this is a great way when I'm just not feeling like eating salads, that I know I'm still getting some greens into my daily routine. So, again, I'm taking five bags. If you're trying to reduce your carbon footprint, make sure you do what I do, reuse these baggies. As soon as you use them, rinse it, set it, set it out to dry, use it again next week. Or get yourself some cute little plastic containers and put them in there. So, I've got a nice, probably at least a packed cup of greens in each one of these, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna taste, take my nice spotted, they're not pretty, they're ripe, and they're perfect for smoothies. <laughs> this is a great use of some bananas that are about to go bad. So I'm gonna take a banana and into each one, I'm gonna break it up. Now I suggest breaking it up pretty well before you stick it in there. Reason being, if you go to stick a whole frozen banana in your blender, you might have some issues. Your blender's gonna be angry with you um, and it might not blend very well. So take the extra second and just break them up before you stick them in your baggies. These are some big bananas, y'all. You do not need them <laughs> this big of a banana, but that's all right, we're going for it. All right. So here we go. I'm on my third bag here. I'm just breaking up my banana, putting it in there. Are y'all with me? Can you do this? I mean, so far so good, right? We're probably at least halfway through. What time is it? We're doing good, we're doing real good. All right, so we've got our bananas. And I don't know if you guys are aware, but about 96% of humans, oh, I gotta get back to that fact, because now I gotta switch out my broccoli. Hold that thought for one second. Make sure you're giving this a like, throw me a comment where you're from, do you meal prep, let me know, I'll be right back. All right, we're back to our smoothie bags. I'm looking. Uh, what's up, Michelle? <laughs> Lots of combos going on there. Remember guys, if you're just joining us, we're doing meal prep in under 30 minutes to set you up for success for your work week. Um, Q&A will be done at the end. So again, keep the comments coming, I love it. But just know that towards the end, I'll try to get a little bit more intimate and one-on-one uh, -on -one with you guys. So, we've got our bananas, we've got our greens in our smoothie bags. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a good heaping, probably about a half cup worth of our frozen berries, which we already talked about, which is an excellent, excellent time saver. Um, still has all the wonderful antioxidants and nutrition as fresh berries. And we're gonna put a big old scoop into each one. And we got blueberries flying everywhere. These suckers stain, they really do. And this is also, I tell people this is a great fruit to add to smoothies if you're trying 
to fool your kids into eating greens. This color covers up any green, I promise you. All right, so last but not least, I'm going to take one tablespoon of flaxseed. Flaxseed, again, with chia seed, it's just another opportunity to incredibly, incredibly boost the nutrition um, just in your daily routine. This has um, lignans, it's got amazing fiber, Ugh, fiber, lots of fiber. <laughs> and that is actually something that brings up a, a interesting point. So if you are completely, completely new to sort of a plant-based vegan diet or lifestyle, uh, I want you to know that a common issue amongst people when they first get start started, <laughs> I love you too, um, is that there are some, some bathroom issues. Okay, let's just talk about it. Let's be open and honest with each other here. Because 96% of the American population doesn't get nearly the amount of protein, or excuse me, amount of fiber in their daily diet that they need. So when you're eating like this and you're getting the chia and the nuts and the flax and the greens and the beans, guys, it's like fiber overload for your system. So just know that it is normal. If that's happening to you, feel free to kind of back off a little bit um, and uh, ease into it. But there you go, guys. Look, all that being said, we've got five bags of smoothies. When it comes go time in the morning, you just take these bags out, break it up a little bit in the bag, throw it in your blender, and you're gonna add a cup of liquid, whether that's a non-dairy milk, whether that's 100% fruit juice, whether that's half fruit juice, half water, whatever it is um, that you prefer, you're gonna add it in, blend it up for about 30 seconds, you're good to go. So, here we go, moving on. Now we're really getting into the thick of it. Um, we are going to get into prepping our actual bowls. Before I do so, I'm gonna go grab my rice. Sorry y'all, I forgot to take my rice out. Darn it. All right, I'm gonna move this back here. Let me go grab that rice. Let me know that you're here. What's up, Richard? <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned in the beginning, you want your rice to be prepped ahead of time. Um, and again, because it's, if you do it at the start of this, it's not gonna be ready come time to actually put together your meals. So that is the only stipulation here. But again, that amount of time it takes you to prep that rice is included in that 30 minutes that I'm talking about. So I'm gonna take one cup of rice, and I'm gonna add one cup of rice to my dishes, whatever it is you use to, to prep your meals, whether it's Tupperware, glass containers, whatever. All right, and we are doing our Mexican Fiesta Bowls here. So, for that, again, we're gonna be using canned beans. If you have the time to make beans from scratch, it does not take a lot of time, and I can certainly share with you some recipes, but um, if you don't, and your crunch for time, which is what this video is all about, don't fear the can. I'm gonna leave it there. If you have questions or you have other concerns about that, let me know. But right now, I'm gonna add, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to divvy up this full can of pinto beans amongst four bowls here. Hopefully you guys can kinda of see what I'm doing. So I got my rice in there, I'm adding my pinto beans. We're gonna make some beautiful Fiesta bowls. I could eat Mexican food every day. I really could. I think taco night in, in our house is, is just one of my favorite things. So, I think I got all my beans out of there. Okay, I'll set that aside. Next, I'm gonna move on to my corn. Again, when you're dealing with cans, guys, be sure to check the label. You want no salt, or at the very least, you want low sodium. They kill you with the salt in canned foods. You also want to look at the ingredients. Make sure it's just one or two ingredients, especially when you're dealing with just something like beans and corn. Um, you don't want a lot of additives. All right, so now we're dividing our corn 
amongst our four bowls here. I'm going to make a total of 10. Um, so I'm going to do four of these Mexican Fiesta bowls, and then I'll do three each of the other two, which I'm about to show you. So again, just dividing this. And this is, you know, a decent portion of food. So I think most people would be satisfied with this. Um, obviously, if you know yourself and you know that you need to, you know, you eat about a cup, maybe two cups of rice per, per meal, then you're going to adjust those quantities when you go to, to cook your rice. And again, one cup of dry rice is going to yield two cups of cooked rice, so keep that in mind. All right, it's not a Mexican fiesta bowl to me if I don't have fresh cilantro. So I'm just going to tear off some cilantro here. And I'm just going to put a little bit into each bowl. I used to hate this stuff. <laughs> I seriously used to think it tasted like soap. Now, I don't think I could live without cilantro. All right. You don't have to get all pretty. You don't have to be fancy. Just take a big bunch, and before you go to eat it, you can, you know, rip it up a little bit better if you want. All right. So I've got my cilantro in there. Now I'm going to take two fresh avocados and my handy dandy knife. And I'm just going to cut them in half. Here's the beauty. You don't need to de-shell them. Just stick it right in there. I will take the pit out, but other than that, you don't need to do anything. Um, I like that for a couple reasons, because I like to, um, when I reheat them, or when I warm it up, I don't like my avocado warm, so it just enables me to kind of like pluck it out, and then I can put it back in after it's warm, and this one doesn't want to come out. Um, and also, because when avocado hits the air, it tends to get a little bit brown, so. All right, there you go. You guys are all set. You can add a little taco seasoning if you have some homemade taco seasoning or a taco seasoning that you love. Um, that you get at the store. Again, being careful to look at those ingredients. And our Mexican Fiesta Bowls are ready. There you go, guys. Delicious, healthy lunch and or dinner. So we got one down, two more to go. We are cruising, cruising, cruising. Hopefully you guys are getting some good tips out of here. Anybody love Mexican food? <laughs> Boy, I can't wait to read all these comments. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. Next up, we are going to do our Asian-inspired teriyaki bowls. All right, so I'm gonna do three of those. Again, starting with the same thing, we're gonna start with a cup of rice. I know you guys can do this. You're just joining us. We are doing one week of meal prep in under 30 minutes. Simple, easy, time-saving tips. Right now we're doing our Asian teriyaki bowls. Okay, so to this cup of rice, you guys, I am going to add broccoli, carrots, and cabbage. And guess what? It's already shredded and chopped up for you. Time-saving, convenient tip. All right, my broccoli, before I do that, let me go ahead and take that out to cool before we do our last bowl. Give this a thumbs up. Again, let me know if this is helpful. How often do you meal prep? What are the challenges? All right, our broccoli is done. Hopefully you guys can see that like a nice little char. It smells delicious. I could eat this tray just, just like this. I seriously could sit there and just munch on it. All right, let me get this off here. Got a little place for it to cool over here so it's ready to go when we need it. All right, take that. Okay, but where were we? We were on our Asian teriyaki bowls and we were talking about how you can get this stuff pre-shredded, pre-sliced, use it. I'm just going to take a really nice big handful and put it on top of my rice. This is great. This is not even cooked. It's raw. Nothing, you know, you don't need to cook anything here. Put a big old handful on top. 
And then to that, it'd be a little boring if that's where we stopped, we are going to add an awesome plant sourced protein, uh, and that is edamame. So this is shelled edamame, again, that you can get at the store in the frozen section that is already done for you. Uh, it's okay that it's frozen because by the time you go to eat it, it's going to be all thawed out. Not to mention you're probably going to warm it up. You don't have to, but you probably will. So I'm just going to put a big old scoop of edamame in each one of these. That is done. Let me stick that back over here. All right. And then you're going to go ahead and get yourself a nice jar of teriyaki sauce. Now you have to be careful here. There are a lot of great teriyaki sauces, but a lot of them have a lot of sugar. You want to make sure there's no high fructose corn syrup. Um, again, not a lot of stuff that you can't pronounce, because if you can't pronounce it, your body probably won't digest it very well either. That's a good, good tip, by the way. So I'm just going to pour my teriyaki sauce over my bowls here. You can put as little or as much as you want. And then if you want to get super duper fancy, you can buy some sesame seeds from the store and you could just sprinkle a few on top, which I will do because I like to be fancy sometimes. All right, there we go. So our Asian inspired rice teriyaki bowls are done, filled with plant protein, filling and delicious. There you go, guys. Bowl number two, done. Let's grab our lids, pack these away. We've got one more for you, and then guess what? We are done. Done, done, done. And if you're wondering, like, how the heck am I gonna remember this? I gotta watch this, like, 50 times. Know that after we're done going live, I will go back in, in the description, um, and I will make sure to give you all of these recipes, uh, everything that you'll need, so. And then last but not least, we are going to prep our Italian rice bowls. So once again, I think you know the routine by now. It's one cup of rice or however much you need. Woo! Scared the Jesus out of me. I don't know what that was. Um, one cup of rice. I think I can finish this up in here. To each bowl. And then, now that our broccoli is done, we're gonna go ahead, or broccoli and cauliflower, excuse me. We are gonna go ahead and just add a nice, healthy portion to each bowl. Now, some of you might be saying, listen, I wanna go plant-based, but, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with a husband or a partner or a spouse who's just not for it or my kids are just resisting all of this stuff that i'm giving you today guys i'm not saying it's all or nothing but all of this stuff can be and you know if your partner you can incorporate chicken on top steak whatever it is um just know that it's versatile don't think that it's all or nothing i think a lot of people get stuck there because they feel like um they don't have that support just find ways around it and all of these dishes really lend themselves to that. It's, it's very versatile. Um, you can add different proteins on top. All right, so last but not least, guys, jarred marinara sauce. There are a plethora out there. Hi, Crystal. Um, there is a lot out there right now. And uh, again, you wanna look at the ingredients. You wanna make sure there's not a lot of additives, low sodium or no salt whenever you can. And you are just going to pour some of that delicious marinara right on top. I love my veggies, so these are piled high. You will too. I think a lot of people think that uh, if they don't like something when they first get started, that it's just never going to happen. Your taste buds, believe it or not, change. You start to actually taste food the way it was intended. You don't crave all of that added salt, all that refined sugar anymore. And you actually, I mean, something just as simple as a fresh peach will taste so different to you. Um, trust me. 
it'll happen. All right, and then again, if you wanna just add a little bit more on top, you can go ahead and sprinkle on some Italian seasoning. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. There you go. All right, and there are our Italian rice bowls. So guess what, guys? We're done. We are done. Now, I know I did a little talking, but if I'm not mistaken, Minus my little intro, we should be under 30 minutes. So let me know, is this something you can do? Does this look like something you could handle? You know, I honestly, like this is a Saturday afternoon, I brought my kids with a movie and treats in my room right now, but I typically like to meal prep when they're sleeping because I need peace and quiet. You know, it's nice to not have the distractions so you can just focus on getting it done. So take 30 minutes after they go to bed and get it done. All right, so let's, I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit closer. I'm gonna sit down. Just wanna see if you guys have any questions. I'd love to look at the comments. Again, know that um, after we are live, I will go back and add uh, the ingredients and some of the recipes in the description so that you'll have that as a resource. Be sure to share this, guys. Tag a friend, share it to your page, share it to a group that you're in that you think someone um, you know, could benefit from this. This needs to be out there. People need to understand how easy it is to eat plant-based. It really is easy. Um, it can be super filling. And if nothing else, it is gonna make you feel amazing. So, let me bring you over. Let's see here. Okay, Crystal, I just made the Mexican bowl right now and it's surprising, surprisingly good. Well, that's good to hear. Loved it, thank you, Jesse. What did you love about it? Who out there meal preps? Like, tell me, like how many times do you meal prep? Have you ever meal prepped? Is this something that, you know, you normally do? Uh, if not, why? Like what, what's holding you back? Trying to see if I can actually look through. How long and what temp was the broccoli in? Okay, so 425 degrees. Um, I left it in for a total of about 20 to 24 minutes, just depending on your oven. Um, I like mine a little charred, so sometimes I like to leave mine in a little bit longer, but you do not have to. So I hopefully that answers that. 425 for a total of about 20 to 24 minutes. Um, the broccoli and the cauliflower actually weren't from the freezer. That was actually fresh. Uh, the only frozen stuff I had was the edamame and the fruit, I think, yes. So hopefully that answers your question. Mm. <laughs> I'm glad you like the teriyaki bowls. Let me see here. Melanie says she meal preps on Sundays. Okay, awesome. She's trying to transition to a more plant-based raw fruit diet. Okay, wow, awesome. Good for you, Melanie. I know a lot of people, that raw thing, I'm, I'm, hey, it's all about steps for me. I believe that, you know, that's probably a fantastic way to eat. Um, but good for you. That's awesome for trying. Jess is going to start making these immediately. That's fantastic. All right. Any other questions? I'm trying to page back through, guys. Thank you, Denise. I'm glad that you found these helpful. Michelle had trouble with her sound. Hopefully she figured that out. Hi, Dylan. All right. This would be perfect for my husband's work week. Awesome. All right. I don't know. If you guys have any more questions, let me know. Again, um, even after this replays, I, can, I will certainly go through and answer any questions that you guys have. Hopefully you found that this was insanely easy, uh, under 30 minutes, and you have all that stuff prepped for your week. Um, that's okay. I will give you some grace, Melody. <laughs> I think it's awesome, though. Um, Christina, she missed the beginning. Yes, no worries. I will, uh, I will make sure to, to replay it for you. Thank you, Dylan. I'm glad you liked it. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, I don't want to keep everybody. It seems like some people were jumping in towards the end, so I'm going to make sure to add all those descriptions 
um, and all the ingredients and I will post them back up there. Make sure that you check it out. And again, I hope you guys share this. If you haven't gone to the page, I don't know if all of you are in my page right now. Um, Plant-Based Explorers is my Facebook page and Plants Not Perfection is my website. So I uh, hope to see you guys there. Make sure to sign up and hit the, not the bell notification so that when I do these again, um, that you will get notified. And with that being said, you guys put in the comments, what kind of meal prep do you wanna see? I've got great budget-friendly meal prep ideas. I've got more super fast and convenient ones or for people who actually would like to um, cook more from scratch. Uh, you know, this is what I do for a living. I have the time to do it. I love creating recipes from scratch that um, are super healthy and you actually know each and every ingredient that's going into it. So if that's something that interests you, let me know again in the comments and I can make a video for that as well. Um, uh, I may make it from scratch, but again, I'm all about simplicity and time-saving tips. So know that it's not gonna be a four-hour recipe. <laughs> Believe that. Okay. Crystal missed the first part too. Don't worry. You'll be able to rewatch it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And I look forward to connecting with you soon.